What's going on guys? Brian here again and today we're going to be talking about one of our family members who hasn't been featured in any of my videos and is going to be going through some growing changes that some people are hesitant, some people are pushing against, and others are welcoming. Today we're talking about the 2021 Toyota Tundra. So right here we're looking at a truck that's been pretty much the same for a very long time and it hasn't gone through a whole lot of changes. The Tundra is very closely related to its, its sibling, the 4Runner, just mainly on the reason that it's one of the models that Toyota doesn't spend a lot of time updating because Toyota knows its community just wants things to stay the same. You know, once you do something right, people don't want you to keep changing it. The Tacoma is a model that Toyota dabbles a little bit with more technology, more features, more changes from time to time, more refreshments. This truck's been the same, I want to say, for, yeah, 13 or 14 years now. You know, of course, you get the LED technology added into the headlights. You get rim changes. They took away the 4.6. You know, you used to have a choice between the 4.6 and the 5.7 liter. But now it's just a 5.7 liter V8. It's a workhorse. You know, you're towing just, just shy of 10,000 pounds. But things are going to be changing next year. We'll talk about that in another video. But I wanted to capture this legendary beast before things change. That way, you know, somebody out there has this video to refer to if they're in the market now or maybe down the line for something used. It's going to be sad to no longer see these things coming new from the factory because when I look at this truck, I just think of the, the statement, the testament of time. You know, a truck that's made it to a million miles. You can look it up yourself. It's simple. Sometimes people even call it boring, but they don't understand. The people that get it, they get it. The Tundra is the Tundra. Now let's dive in. So there's no way around the first thing that everybody probably noticed when they took a look at the thumbnail, and that's the color. This is called Voodoo Blue. There's no color like it. It's not a color changing color. It looks voodoo blue at all angles. It jumps out. To be, it looks venomous. It reminds me of something venomous that came out of the jungle. And it's funny too, because the Tundra has a, the face of a polar bear. It doesn't have the dramatic teardrops of a Chevy or the giant E shaped headlights of a Ford. It doesn't have six fog lights and six orange lights and all the other stuff that the other trucks have. It's a big, tough effing polar bear that if you don't get out of its way, it's gonna smash you and everything around you if you don't move. So what we're gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna try to keep it concise. There's a lot of truck to be offered here, so I'm gonna go over as much as I can. We're gonna break down the exterior, the engine and powertrain, and then we're gonna work our way inside and we're gonna cap the video and come to our conclusion. All right, here we go. Starting from the front with the sport trims, which this is the Tundra TRD Sport. Fun fact, Tundra Sports and Off-Roads are actually SR5s with the stuff packaged in. So this is technically an SR5 with the TRD Sport package and a couple extra things that I'll show you in a couple minutes. I know it's a sport right away for two reasons. You have the hood scoop in the front and I have color matching on the corners of the bumpers. And then if I go onto the back, you'll see there's even color matching on the back. So the great thing about the Sport is you have this very uniform look. It lacks chrome entirely, and I gotta say, it does the color matching much better than the Tacoma. And like I forgot to mention, I'm the owner of a 2021 Toyota Tacoma Off-Road Edition in Army Green. So I'm gonna give you a little taste here and there of my opinion in the comparison between these two because I've driven a lot of miles on the Tundra. We've had many in the rental fleet. So back to the exterior styling. You have a black, housing in the headlights which plays very nicely with the blue you have black bezels around the fog lights they changed the ugly chrome on the uh, grills that you used to get and now you get a nice sparkly dark gunmetal gray colored grill and then here's what these sport wheels look like they play with the light nicely especially after a wash and wax it's a 20 inch this has the blackout badges here which bounce off the blue. We're seeing a lot of blue and black theme here, which is nice. Onto the back, color matching on the bumpers, stamped tailgate, gives it that tough, rugged look. Some people do the inserts. I did the inserts on the Tacoma, but I feel like on the Tundra, 
it's better with that stamped look and of course a silver and gray sticker there on the back the decal for tier d sport simple timeless there's no competition i'm biased but there really isn't competition against this truck it, it's its own entity and it will go through everything so there's the styling let me know what you think let's move on to the engine powertrain and the way this thing drives so first thing I notice is you have hood struts, which I really like. I'm thinking about possibly putting those on the Tacoma. So if anybody's upgraded on their Tacoma to hood struts, let me know if it was worth it. But here's what we have. Simple, easy engineering. There's our iForce V8 5.7 liter. It's the only engine option you get. Just like in the Tacoma review. Toyota designs things that are easy to get to. I got my air box, I got my fuses, giant jug for the washer fluid because I'm likely to be going dirty places and having adventures or working on a farm doing construction, etc. This is just a dust cover. I have the four coil packs on the side, four coil packs on the side, fuel rail and fuel rail for my mechanically inclined people. Brake system, very easy to get to in service right over here. Fuses, battery. And one of my famous lines, slides out like a Game Boy cartridge. There's your radiator, easy to come out. Simple. Toyota designs their trucks to be easy to work on so that in long-term ownership, it does nothing but save you money. What's unique to the Sport is you actually have more stabilization in your steering and suspension. So I have the TRD stabilization here and a more sporty, uh, tuned suspension that's going to be a little bit more tight and responsive. I can feel the difference My uh, my lady's dad has this truck all blacked out in the same exact setup He just has the tonneau cover and a little bit different style of actually no he has the same running boards and I, I've driven the sports they, they hit the turns really well and then just to show you in the back That's what we're working with underneath So I'm going to take a second to talk about the drive as the owner of a 2021 Tacoma. The transmission is, it, it almost knows exactly what you're going to do. It doesn't have the gear hunting of a Toyota Tacoma. You give it a little gas, it gives you a little power. You give it a lot of gas, it gives a lot of power. And I find, I know we all have different perceptions of things, but I find that the transmission does exactly what I expect it to do. It's seamless. It's, it's, it's linear. You give it more foot, it gives you more power. You give it maximum, it gives you maximum. And when this thing opens up, it screams and roars. But my favorite part is the cold start. When you start the engine up, which I'm sorry, I can't give you, I can't give you a cold start because this thing's already warmed up because I drove down the road to this area here to do the video. But the cold start on this on a winter morning, oh my goodness, look up a video of that. I'll have to make a video of that sometime soon. There's nothing like the Tundra V8 startup. But back to the drive. It, it manages its weight. I find the center of gravity to be decent for what it is. Uh, you know, it's not a racing truck, of course, and the Sport is not an off-roading truck, but I haven't taken any Tundras off-roading. I've just done road driving on it and a little bit of gravel trails and, and a decent amount of snow. It is a absolute snow tank. This thing is a monster in the snow. I mean, it'd be rare that you had to put it in four low, but I've done it. I've been in some very deep snow. I wanna say probably, almost up to the run i think i was making a line in the snow with the running boards to me that's deep i, I ain't trying to go out into alaska and have the the snow up past the bumper but with, with the the factory tires you're getting even on the sport like i've taken the sport sr5 and off roads out it's great just imagine what it would be like to upgrade your tires for certain you know experiences and adventures that you're going on so a plus I'm going to say it, much better than the Tacoma. The drive is much better than the Tacoma. It's it's made for travel. You know, you can do construction. You can do this for road trips. There are people that have just bought these because they love the way they drive. They don't even need the bed. Speaking of the bed, let's go check the bed out. So with most Tundras, you're getting a spray-in bed liner. Unless you get the Crew Max, then they don't give you anything because they're saving on weight on those. I hope that's true. But here's what the spray-in looks like. I honestly prefer the spray-in because it saves you the most space and there's no way that water and debris and salt can get underneath what would be like a plastic clip-in liner because you'll have a hole over here and a hole over here. 
that's truly made it to the surface. And then in 400,000 miles, when this is worn out, you just, just spray it with a little bit Rhino line or something like that, and you're good to go. So it's a dampening tailgate. So when you let it out, it slows itself down. On the double cabs, you get the long bed, which looks like this. It's big. They do an eight and a half foot uh, long bed on a like a super work truck, but we haven't seen one of those in a while. Production is crazy right now. But the double cab has the half door in the back. The crew max has the long door. So with the crew max, you're, you're getting, there's no crew max long bed from what I've seen. Like I said, I could be wrong. I learn something every day as do all of us, but right now with production, that's just what we're seeing. Now let's make our way inside. All right, so this actually has upgraded leather from the store, but this is what the seats would look like in uh, cloth if you were getting the Sport. There are upgrades to getting the leather, depending on availability. Now in the Tacoma, the seat would go forward and this would go down, but it's different on the Tundra. You have this lever here, and this comes up and you have locking storage. And you have a little Toyota first aid kit in this truck, that's nice. And then on that seat, on that side, you can bring that one up and you have a really big long storage there. One piece all weather mat in the back. And this one even comes with your cloth TRD Sport mats for the uh, summertime. So your lady can take her sandals off and rub her bare feet all over the uh, carpet and be comfortable. On to the front. A non-locking floor mat for the passenger, which I actually, I don't like. I wish it was locking, but it, that's something tiny. And your glove box is a, a decent size, I'd say comparable to the Tacoma. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger, but it's all good. You get a shelf stock from the factory, easy access to your cabin air filter in there. And that locks up with the slide out key for the key fob because the sports are push button start. Pretty good storage in the door, nice big door card. You have a long linear storage here with two bottle holders, hard plastics like you get on most of the Toyota trucks, and then a nice, soft, comfortable material here. And just a simple window and lock switch, nothing fancy. That's what the Tundra's all about. Utilitarian, simple, but comfortable to drive. Onto the driver's seat. All right, so here is what it looks like when you're about to get into your Tundra. I have the electronic seat here, forward, back, up, down with a twist. I have the recliner and my lumbar support, which is for my lower back. Simple electronic window setup with the door locks and a window lock. Big tough handles, big locks. Even though they're lightweight, I, I feel the quality. This is going to be an overview with a little bit of a review from my point of view. Lots of space. And the great thing about the seating on the Tundra compared to the Tacoma is that because it's a taller truck and you have a, a larger body height, you can sit with your knees bent like you're sitting in a, in a chair or on a couch. It's great. It's doable for all heights. You can be a short guy. You can be a tall guy. You can adjust everything the way you need it to be. And I'll show you real quick this huge storage you have back here. I can't can't hide that from you. I could probably fit a 22 back here. I couldn't, uh, maybe a couple golf clubs. I could definitely fit a boatload of emergency gear, camping gear, fishing gear, etc. It just depends on what you're into. It's made for everybody. In the back, I have my cup holders here. It looks tough, feels tough, made tough. It's old school, you know, 12 volt old school technology. You can run a converter here for your USBs if you need. Not a problem. I know people like to kind of nitpick, but is that really a big deal? You can just run a converter. That's what the Tundra is all about. You might say, oh, Toyota was lazy. They're not doing refreshments, this and that, and the other thing. But here's the thing. There's nothing like simple technology that lasts a long time that you can just do little tiny updates yourself. You know, your average construction worker or farmer, in my humble opinion, really doesn't care all that much whether it's a USB or a 12 volt back here. But I digress. Next up, what I wanna do with you is jump into the driver's seat and we're gonna go over all the buttons here. We're gonna go through the cluster. I'm gonna show you what all this stuff is. We'll work our way up and I'll make sure that anybody considering a Tundra or who just bought a Tundra or maybe has owned one for a little bit, 
can review this to learn a lot more about the truck. Ooh, here comes my favorite part. I don't know if you heard that, but I just love that. Nice little Tundra introduction with Toyota on the screen. Alright, so I'm going to start over here with these buttons. I have my mirror controls over here for my left and right. I have full controls of the interior lights. I can even adjust my headlight level on the fly, which is great for when you load the bed up with stuff and your headlight level has changed on you, or you just need to see a little better. And then this will be the bed light that shines on the bed. I can turn it on while driving, uh, only with the door, and then off. So, a little brain fart. So, that's great because if somebody's like, I don't know, tailgating you, just give them a little bit of that, and then back right off. Auto high beams and my rear window. When I push this down, like this, my back window opens, and if I have my front two windows open, I'll get a nice flow of fresh air through the doors, and it'll go right out there. Just like I mentioned in the Tacoma SR5 video, it's great to get that airflow, so you don't have to go in the back and open that up. You can do it yourself, and then I pull this up like that, and it closes. Then I have your regular Toyota headlight stock off auto parking lights and headlights my fog lights are right over here on to the right i have my wipers so if i click one down it's intermittent then down two is low down three is high no back washer just the front which is why i only have this symbol onto the steering wheel i have my radio station controls or volume which you know how i feel about this setup toyota why didn't we do up and down we're at a point toyota where this is just a unique quirk to toyota it is what it is Interestingly enough, this looks pretty identical to my Tacoma's steering wheel, except mine has the darker silver here. But yeah, I think this is the same exact steering wheel as a Tacoma. Minus the wrapping, I know some of them will have the leather wrap. Voice commands, you can even teach the truck to learn your voice. And then a labeled uh, mute button, which will also go through the different modes. So it'll go through the music modes, but if I press and hold it mutes. Answer and hang up phone calls here. This is my following distance for the automatic cruise control, and this is my lane departure alert. It'll beep at me when I go out of my lane, but it's not gonna steer me because this is a truck, it's only gonna beep. And then for cruise control, I just press this in, set it down, or if I press and hold, it'll go to normal cruise control. So let me get some focus. That's gonna be the symbol for radar cruise. That's gonna be normal cruise. So it looks like this. Let me get some focus action. There's my radar cruise, a little green car, but if I press and hold, it switches to the normal cruise control and then I can increase and decrease speed like up and down here. These arrow select and back button are gonna be for the MID, which is called multi-information display. That's my screen right here. And then I have the favorites page button, which if I press and hold, it'll save my favorite page on the screen, which I so happen to put as this. But when I go through the left and right arrows, it's gonna go through the different icons here. I'm not gonna to go too far into depth, but the eye symbol there is information. I can go up and down and see different information about the truck and my drive. This is gonna show me the music playing. This is going to be more information about my truck, specifically the tire pressure. And this is just an estimate, by the way, so check your pressure once a month. And my trailer braking. Onto warnings, this is going to be warnings like if I need service, if the truck senses anything, if I need air pressure, and then settings, which I can change some of the settings to the safety features and even some vehicle settings. Most people like to leave their screen here because you can see the digital speed and my range. Right down below, I have the stock for my odometer and trip, which is gonna be displayed on the bottom. And then it shows me what gear I'm in, park, reverse, neutral, etc. So I don't have to look down at the shifter, I can just look right on the screen. Up top is my outside display, then I have four gauges here for my vitals, and if I back it up a little bit, I have my revs on the left, and I have my speed on the right. So here's my view, sitting in the truck. Great visibility, the windshield is a little bit bigger than the Tacoma. Nice big windows in the front. Moving on by the push start button, I also have my trailer braking here with tow hole. Then I have my four wheel drive, which is easy. I can do four high on the fly, or I can go into neutral and push and turn to go into four low. And it's gonna give me beeping while I'm in four low. But I don't need any of that. Let's work our way up top. 
Up top, I have a paper clip for my paperwork. I have Safety Connect, which will dispatch services for uh, emergencies if the airbags go off, or I can push it, say I need some help. Simple push lights, sunglass case with a soft backing so I can put it lenses in. And then on these, I have a nice frosted plastic light here so it doesn't blind me while I use the mirror. And this actually will slide, so it's not a little thing that comes out, it slides to keep the sun out of my eyes. Missed it. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home link for three garages and a power button to turn off the auto dimming feature. There's no flip switch because it senses the lights behind you and gets dark on its own with a compass. Onto here, I have a nice non slip little area, and this mat comes out so I can clean it. Great place to put my phone. But also down over here by the center console, I have another great place to put my phone. Speaking of which, if I open this up, I have a huge crate where I can put all my things. You can even get a Toyota safe that goes in here, which is really cool. And I have a holder for tissues. I can get a little travel tissue thing and pull my tissues out. Another clip for paperwork and business cards and two pen holders. And some more ancient technology. But like I said, you can just run a converter, that's fine. And then I have a carpeted bottom here so I don't scratch up my shiny stuff. Little areas for your belongings. Same thing over here with one, two, and three cup holders and a long storage. Let me give you a view. And then down below in front of the shifter, I have three USBs. So there you go. You were wondering where all the USBs were, and there they are. I have one, two, and three, and then I have another 12 volt there as well. And also the button to turn off the traction control and the vehicle stability control. That's gonna be great for when you're off-roading if you ever do that, or if you need full power to the wheels while you're in the snow. These flip down automatically, but the one you use for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is gonna be right over here. Onto the climate control, you get two zone with the sport. So I can control the whole truck like so, or I can separate. And then I just hit sync to synchronize it. And I can control it right here, which I'm going to turn down because I'm a little hot. Mode is going to go through the air direction, like you can see in the little picture of the person. Then I have the defrosting mirrors, fan speed. And I have the front defrost with recirculate and AC pairing very well for the hot weather. And if I hit auto, it's going to work like the um, central air for your house or your apartment. Hazards, real easy to get to. You'll notice the buttons are big, they're square, they're round. It's because they want you to be able to have your work gloves on. Your eyes are frozen because you're in the middle of Alaska hunting and you're, you're trapping for fur and you have your gloves on or you're in construction with dust in your eyes and your work gloves on and this is still usable. Rumors have it that the new Tundra has little tiny buttons in a row. We'll get into that in a different video. But what I appreciate as a Tacoma owner on the Tundra is that you can see they were clearly thinking about you because they knew there was a chance you'd have winter gloves, work gloves, etc. Big knobs. Gives it a tough look, of course. But this is functional stuff. Just so you know. And that's why I have these big squares here to use for your, your audio and your screen. This is touchscreen, by the way. So don't judge this. It takes a little bit of time to get an accurate reading. This will go through different things. So real quick, home screen, great place to see different information all at once. Of course, it's all interwebbed. If I want to get to the menu, this is where I can go to do my setup, see some information about the truck, music. I can even do some advanced settings here, like turn the beep off, change the color theme, change what the home screen shows, do the voice recognition changing, uh, training, sorry, and some advanced settings down there. This is something that my Tundra people are gonna like. If I hit the menu button here, I go into the menu, I hit display, and I can turn the screen off while listening to music. So it's menu, display, screen off. Awesome. And then speaking of brightness, I forgot this little stalk here, if I push, I can change the brightness to the gauges. So that's nice at nighttime if this stuff gets distracting for some people. Another fun fact, you'll always know what screen you're in because it tells you right up top. Here's my audio with all my different audio sources. And then this is going to give me navigation here in-house if I have it uh, for like more of an upgraded truck. But when you're plugged in for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto right here, when you hit map, it's going to go to your Google Maps, Apple Maps, etc. Waze, I like to use Waze. Seek and track for music, phone, once you're connected to Bluetooth, it's going to show you your recent calls, your favorites, etc. And then the wonderful Entune App Suite, which if you're not familiar with Entune App Suite, go in the comments and somebody let them know what Entune App Suite is and how awesome it is. 
that's sarcasm. N2 Napsuite is just pretty much like an app suite that Toyota developed that nobody really likes. Um, me included. Tune and scroll. Tell me why, guys. Tell, tell the people why that don't know about that. Tell them why. Tune and scroll for the radio and then power and volume here. Same vents as the Tacoma, which is cool. Easy to use. You can turn them as well and close them and lock them. So there is an overview of that. And that's your 2021 Toyota Tundra Sport. Let's cap the video up. So there it is, the 2021 Toyota Tundra SR5 with the TRD Sport package in voodoo blue, which in my opinion is an awesome color. And I wanted to make this video for somebody who might be in the market or know somebody who's in the market, or maybe you just bought a truck and you wanted to revisit some of the features that you forgot about and you don't want to dive into the book and get lost. Um, I just wanted to say a special thank you to everybody who has been supporting me. I started the YouTube channel a couple months ago just for fun to help out some of my clients and friends. So thank you so much for the support. It really, it really warms my heart. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a like. And if there's somebody that you think would benefit, please share it with them. Uh, I like to go over all the buttons to help people. So I hope it helped you. I hope it helps somebody that you know, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.